Today we're taking to task every first party platform holder, and I think they deserve it. Good morning Mario, and good morning Switch fans, hope you're all doing fantastic. We do have a ton of Switch releases today, a lot of games like Maquette, Bat Boy, and Cassette Beast dropped on Switch. There's actually like five, six, seven, eight others, it's a big indie release day. Definitely some stuff worth checking out if you're interested on adding to your Switch. If you're done with Tears of the Kingdom or need a break from Zelda, you can definitely check those out, and I think I might give a few of them a go. Plus, we have a new Metacritic Low that spells Doom for the Switch release. But what's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Today's main focus is Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, and the fact that they just cannot get these shows right. We, we, have, we have to talk about it. We, we really do because we've entered a point where, like, this is the expectation, not the anomaly. But first, let me tell you about Gollum, uh, the Lord of the Rings game that's supposedly coming to Switch later this summer. It released on all the other consoles with the Switch version coming later. I just dropped a mouse and caught it. That was pretty quick. Uh, no look reflexes. Uh, 38. 38 is the Metacritic that Gollum got. It's out today. 38. To put that in perspective, that's uh, like 60 points lower than The Legend of Zelda. 60 points lower. I feel bad for Daedalic Entertainment and uh, the people who put this game together um, because I know, I'm sure they tried. It's never fun to have a game fail, but this one clearly is a failure. And the Switch version is coming later because they probably couldn't get the port done in time. We're having difficulty with the port. So um, this may end up being one of the worst Switch ports ever. The base game is already struggling mightily and getting some horrid marks. I don't want to spend any more time on it, but the Lord of the Rings Gollum, if that was on your horizon as a nice Switch third-party get, take take it off. Erase it. Mr. Miyagi, that thing, straight off your, your hopes and dreams, okay? Now, speaking of hopes and dreams, let's just get right into what I want to talk about, which is these freaking shows. And I'm talking about Xbox's big showcases. I'm talking about... Sony's big showcases, and I'm talking about Nintendo Directs. I feel like we have now entered a point where all three have disappointed the heck out of us, and they don't seem to understand what people want. Now, maybe we're all grouchy, maybe we're all grumpy. We've been through a lot on planet Earth the past few years, but I do believe there's three or so main reasons why these shows have been failing lately, and why they end up being disappointing and never living up to the hype. And please, please talk at me in the comments. Please let me know if you know why these shows are all disappointing and flopping, okay? I have my hypotheses, but those are just my opinions and my ideas. Please let me know if you have a good answer for why these things all disappoint over and over from all three. Please let me know. Let's, let's try to figure this out together, okay? Now, like, I'll acknowledge there is the hyperbole of the internet hype machine that could make these shows just insurmountable, right? We build the mountain up so high, we're like, oh my god, we're getting Mario, and Zelda, and Donkey Kong, and Star Fox, and Kid Icarus, and Splatoon, and ARMS, and, and maybe they just can't live up to it. Sony had a massive showcase yesterday for the first time in a really long time. They call them state of plays until they're sure that they have enough to wow you, and then they do a showcase to set up the future of their platform. And yesterday's showcase really set up the Xbox Series systems as much as it set up the PlayStation systems because most of the games are on both dang platforms. Yeah, Spider-Man 2 looks freaking hype as all hack and I will be buying, playing, and obsessing over that game. But outside of that, this show was a miss. And if you recall, recent Nintendo Directs have been misses. And Xbox last year... I don't know what they were doing. They announced all these games to come out in the next 12 months and like half of them have not come out. Half of them just didn't make it. Things like Silk Song and Forza and Starfield, they just didn't make it. And what did make it, Redfall, I think people may have instead rather it didn't make it. Now Nintendo's interesting because their last Direct in February did bring about a new Zelda trailer. People were all goo goo over that but we also got hardly anything for Nintendo's future. And we're in this strange boat where we have all three companies putting together showcases that can't please the masses, and that's a problem. I think that's something that's not just like, oh, well, this show, it, it, it just didn't have it for everybody. It was a genre, fo no, this isn't like, oh, fighting fans were eaten, RPG fans struggled, or like, first person shooter fans were having the time of their lot. No, like, these are just misses. These are straight not reading the room. And I'm going to go into three main reasons I think why. 
One of the big ones could be a positive if you spin in a certain way, but I think we've now learned the, the true outcome, and that is not showing games until they're super ready. Now, Nintendo has been really good about this in the Switch generation, and I'll applaud them. They typically don't show something until it's really ready, unless it's a big game, like a year or so off. But in this moment, Nintendo apparently has nothing. And unless you really believe this weird, strange mythological universe where Nintendo is not releasing games over the next six months, they have games. And they have games that are close to ready. They're just not showing them. I applaud Nintendo when they do the thing where it's like, oh, this is out in a few months. That feels great. But at the same time, you need to set up your future. You need to set up a reason for consumers and gamers to feel good about spending hundreds of dollars on your system and investing hundreds more in your ecosystem. Instead, Nintendo has left us with a blank slate. This isn't like the Taylor Swift song, we don't know what names to write down. Nobody understands what to put in that space because they haven't told us. Now, Sony did something sort of similar where they gave us a lot of cool Square Enix games and Konami games and Capcom games, but in terms of the future of Sony, what the heck are they releasing after Spider-Man 2? Nobody knows. Xbox. We know they have Starfield. We know they have Redfield, Redfall, but we don't know most of their first party output. They have hinted at things. They've highlighted things. They haven't really shown much. And I think we're now at a flip back point where before we got to a level where it's like, okay, don't show it if it's years off. We were too far that direction. And now I feel like we're too far this direction where we're only showing stuff if it's out in two months. And that does not give you the hype and hope that you can look forward to, that doesn't give you the one screenshot that really gets you going, that does not give you the magazine article where you're like, oh my god, I cannot wait for that game, that does not give you the big circle where you're like, 2024 is going to be dope, we don't even know what's coming out in fall of 2023. These companies have erred too far on the side of calculated cautiousness and now aren't showing enough of the future. And in Nintendo's case, they're showing nothing of the future. Another one where I get where they're coming from, but I hate it, is the idea of just trying to copy, duplicate, and make bank. I know companies exist to make money, but I truly feel this is not the way. We've seen time and time again these copycat games. And yesterday was more egregious than ever. Yesterday was like, call up Better Call Saul and get offended. Because Foam Stars is Splatoon with soap. Foam Stars is Overwatch combined with Splatoon. Foam Stars is every failed live service game that dips out after six months combined with Nintendo's not really live service version of a live service game that has succeeded, but oops, this one almost assuredly won't. There are so many live service games trying to take a chomp out of the market that the biggest and best have. Fortnite has a lot of mindshare. Destiny has a lot of mindshare. You're, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it by copying. You're probably not going to get it by being original. But you have a much better chance if you form an amazing team and you try something wholly new. But if you take Splatoon and add soap bubbles and some cutesy anime girls, you're definitely not. We've even seen quality solid games just... They come and they go. And... It's not to say we shouldn't have a bunch of online multiplayer titles, but when all you can do is try and copy Fortnite for like the eighth year in a row, no. We got like four or five live service entries in Sony Showcase, and Nintendo kind of sits this out, although they do highlight some gawky third-party titles that try to capture some of the online audience on Nintendo Switch. But everybody needs to just kind of stop trying to copycat, stop trying to hit the live service boom, and realize that games as a service is way, way, way less likely to win than just a solid quality normal title. Where are the normies? Yesterday in the showcase, Spider-Man 2 is a single player game, what Sony does best. Immortals of Avium looks really cool, and to be fully transparent, I played the game, I work on the game, I know the game, and it's single player, and it's awesome. Nintendo, obviously with Tears of the Kingdom, is single player focused, but even they have kind of skewed away from showing off like where's the next mario mario has been missing from the main line for a minute here and i feel like we're just not getting the kinds of games that really would get people excited i feel like they think they know what we want but instead they just know what their wallets would want and yet it's not working 
all of these live service titles, all of these shooters, heck, even Marathon, possibly the most exciting reveal trailer from yesterday's Sony Showcase, is exclusively a PvP extraction shooter, which chops off half the audience right from the jump. You have all these games that just revealed looks that are, again, trailers for live service, online, character-based shooters. We, we have those. And even the ones we have, like Overwatch 2, don't even know what they're doing, are cutting PV. Like, they're all a mess, and then they all fail. And we gotta stop it. Games like Suicide Squad could be promising, given they're from an excellent developer like Rocksteady, but instead they enter development hell, and delay hell, and probably review score purgatory by trying to be the all game, by trying to be something that makes a billion dollars over 10 years. Just, just get a good team of developers and put out a good game. This is kind of a tangent here, but like, do we have the talent and creativity anymore to make awesome new games? I don't, I don't know. Are we at a talent void? Are we at a creativity void? Or are we just at a greed maximum? Is everyone trying to just make the most money possible? And that's why these showcases are filled with games that nobody really wants, but the developers think that eventually your wallet will. There's only room for enough games as service type titles for you to spend on and for you to play. There's not room for like 50. And that's why 49 out of 50 fail. When are they going to wake up and realize that this is not the way forward and games are going to have to change? The genre of like play it forever and spend a bunch of money on cosmetics, it's done. At least it should be. If you're not the mega winner or you don't have a brilliant new idea, stop trying to add soap to water. It just doesn't work in this scenario. And that moves me to my third point, which is like, where are the new franchises? Where are the new big ideas? So many of the games that we're building off came from the 360 and PS3 era. That was a time when there were so many great new franchises. Now for Nintendo, this is a bit of an oddball because their great franchises have been around forever, yet I still think they need to experiment with new ideas as well. Look at Splatoon. That was a game that entered in the Wii U era and did brilliant and has become one of Nintendo's premier titles. I understand they made an attempt with ARMS. Make another darn attempt. It's been six freaking years. Make another darn attempt at a brand new idea, a brand new IP, a brand new franchise, and not one that you're just going to minimally invest in as sort of an offshoot. No, make it a big deal. Games like Batman Arkham and Bioshock and Mass Effect and Gears of War did not begin out of nowhere. They started with a commitment. And now those franchises are still the franchises that we're chasing today. Yes, a few entered in last generation, like I mentioned with Splatoon or Horizon on the PS4, but so many of these games began eons ago. Like yesterday, we're hoping we get a Last of Us trailer. Last of Us came out so long ago. We have all of these games that are building, like a Ratchet and Clank, or an Infamous, or a Kill Zone, or a Resistance. These are the games that we hoped may show up, may revitalize. Xbox is guilty of the same. Nintendo, they have nothing new since ARMS, really. We need some new characters and some new franchises to launch us forward, and I believe this has been a problem for the better part of a decade. Nobody has tried real new stuff. Nobody has tried to invent new main characters. Nobody has tried to hit it home with big, crazy, exciting new ideas since really the 360 genre. And I don't know if this is a caution thing, like we can't invest in something new, it's too risky because games cost too much nowadays. I don't know if this is a creativity or a talent thing, like we don't have the people or the directors, they've all gone to form their own studios, so we gotta just roll with Assassin's Creed 800 and Final Fantasy 16. And look, sometimes these games are great. I've heard amazing things about FF16 and sometimes double digit sequels can work out really well. But I do think one of the things that prevents some of these showcases from being truly exciting is that we're just riffing on things that we have been riffing on in these showcases for literally a decade. A decade. And maybe it's because there's diminishing returns on the graphics side of things and the performance side of things. The systems can't do too much more than they did before and so there's not exciting new ideas. But we're in an era of remakes. We're in an era of refreshes. Instead of building a new franchise, we're freaking remastering franchises that only came out a few years ago. Sony, one of the things they could have shown yesterday was a Horizon Zero Dawn remake. A Horizon Zero Dawn remake. Instead of a brand new game from Guerrilla, a new IP, a new try. It's just weird. It's very strange that we don't have big new characters, big new box cover bombastic heroes. 
that we can get hyped for. I just think we need new. I think we need new to be exciting because if they continue to show off the, the sequels and the remakes and the spin-offs, it's like there's no Megaton there. Megatons existed because it was like there's a first game and then maybe the sequel generated a huge hype. Or a new game from a new exciting uh, director or person or someone that you've grown up loving their titles and then they drop something really great and new. That's where you get the big wow, the big new idea. Instead we have recycled ideas, copycat ideas, sequelitis ideas, and we're stuck in a place where we're not trying new stuff. Like, I'm not trying to poke the bear, but even Tears of the Kingdom, for as almighty and amazing as it is, it's not trying anything incredibly new. There is a fear of the new, and instead we stick our hopes and dreams to live service games that inevitably drop, and we just need a complete mind change. I feel like the industry is in a place where it needs to be shaken and stirred. I think we need to really whir this thing up, get out the egg beaters and just chop it up, mix it up. Say, hey, you gotta make a new franchise. I know that's scary, and I know we have so many IP. Even things like Star Wars, investing so heavily in video games, while being a great thing, it limits the exposure of new ideas. It limits the opportunity. A game like Titanfall is silenced, and instead, Star Wars is picked. And I understand why. It's about the big bucks. But even some of the big buck games are not making it work, are not finding their success. So it's time we make a change. These showcases are not doing it. And there's also the part of like, there's 50 showcases during the year from so many developers and so many publishers and even games have their own individual showcase and then a follow-up showcase and then a follow-up to the follow-up and then a callback in case you missed it. Like everything is diluted and spread and that's one of the dangers of disintegrating E3 is you just spread everything so thin that no show can be successful. Instead of having one show be amazing and everybody else kind of feel like they get the scraps, now nobody is really that exciting. The only opportunity I see to turn this conversation around for 2023 is with Nintendo. They can drop a huge direct and just unleash a gauntlet. They can announce five games that we know nothing about and be huge heroes. Nintendo has a chance to rewrite this scene right now as soon as they want. They can come out with it in June, July, August, September. If they want to really sweeten the deal, throw in some new hardware, I'm not complaining. But really, when was the last showcase that you were really rah-rah about? And, and set aside your favorite game. Yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 getting announced and released soon after was exciting. Yes, Tears of the Kingdom getting its third trailer and finally showing off more of the world was a hit. But think about them as a whole. Showcases and shows, press conferences, if you will, the big presentations from Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, they've entered a lurch. They've entered a ditch. They've entered a down period, and they don't seem to be coming up for air soon. We need a shakeup in the industry. And for me, it feels like show things to get us excited about the future. Have some big new ideas and try a new IP. Franchises really freaking need to reemerge as a new thing. We need new characters and new big worlds to get excited about. Not just the ones we've been going to for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I know it's scary. But look, even your safe bets, like the games and services, online PvP multiplayer, hero character shooters with cosmetic purchases, do not pay off. They fail. You lose money, and it sucks. Stop it. Change it. Do something different. These showcases all fall victim to the same problem, or maybe it's just Hollow Knight. Maybe if Silk Song came out, everything would be better. That game has been in multiple showcases. And, and maybe it's actually the curse. Problem is, these shows just are lacking the excitement and the oomph that they used to have. And I don't think it's us as jaded gamers or hyperbolic hype machiners. I think it's, we need a change. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments down below. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. And until next time, everybody, love you lots. Switch Force, out.